Hi everyone, if you're new here to the channel, my name is Ovi. I'm a third year medical student and welcome to Ovi Man. So let me tell you about my very first day in plastic surgery. So for my very first day, I got there at around 7.20. Um, rounds were starting at 7.30. Um, and when I got there, it was like no one. So I was like, okay, am I in the right place? And then someone came up um, around like eight and then we did ward rounds. So there was, all, there, was, there was only four patients. So it was like really fast. Um, and then that day was a surgery day. So it would start operating like a bit, you know, later in the day. Um, and then, yeah, right after that, the really, really short ward rounds, uh, I didn't have to do any pre-round. I don't think like it's a thing here in Ireland. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> um, yeah. And then we had two consoles in the emergency department. So the first one was a, um, a man who had lacerated his two fingers uh, with a knife trying to open a can. Um, so yeah, the tendons were cut and I basically learned there and then how to do the hand physical exam. Um, I've never done it before and I should know how to do it, but I didn't know. So, you know, we're doing all these like flexor things, um, physical exams, but yeah, the patient couldn't flex their fingers. Like when you ask them to do a fist, like the, the fingers would look something like that. You know, they were trying to make a fist, right? But their fingers would like stick up because the tendons were damaged. So they needed to be um, repaired, right? To restore the function. Um, so that was that, that was one of the cases. The other cases that I saw, oh, that was, oh yeah, that one, I, I have never seen that much blood before, honestly. <laughs> um, I've seen cardiac surgeries before, like heart valve replacements, and I saw a lot of blood, but like not that much blood. So the patient had a hand laceration that was about, 10 or 15 centimeters on the back of the hand and the, the patient had very frail skin that was prone, you know, he was prone to like um, degloved injuries. He had degloved injuries in the past, but yeah, his whole, the whole back of his hand was degloved, right? He had a big laceration. It wasn't deep at all, but it was lacerated, right? The whole hand was degloved and you could see the whole back of the hand, but there was so much blood you couldn't really see anything. I'm telling you, you can see the back of the hand. Well, actually you couldn't because you couldn't see anything. There was so much blood. So the patient had like this big bandage around, like he was in zone two of the ED. If you don't know about the zones in the ED, I made um, two videos about emergency medicine. If you want to go and check them out in the corner right here or in the description down below, uh, explaining the different zones and stuff. But yeah, like there was so much blood. We couldn't see anything and it wasn't like arterial or like well, it was Venus, of course, but like, it was just from the capillaries. Like his arteries were intact. His tendons were, uh, his extensor tendons were all right. Like, it, like his muscles were all right. The bones were all right. It was just like lacerated. And there was so much, but we couldn't see anything. Like, or like, you know, with the gauze, like putting it down, uh, like a special like Vaseline infused gauze. Cause then when the blood um, coagulates, it sort of sticks to the gauze and then you can rip apart. Like you can do more damage. Um, yeah, so it was like, it was a lot of blood. And they called plastics, the ED docs is, like, it was too too big of a laceration to just normally suture and the skin was too frail to suture. So that's when you call in plastics. Um, so yeah, those were like the, the two ED consoles. So that's pretty much what happened early in the morning. And then afterwards the surgery started. So in the morning, uh, it was more of uh, like minor procedures. So it was often like patients with like BCC or SCCs, like uh, basal cell carcinomas or squamous cell carcinomas, which are skin cancers uh, that need to be resected. So it's uh, uh, like cancers on the superficial part of the skin, but you still need to remove like the, the whole part of the skin with the appropriate margins, right? Needed uh, to make sure you got all of it out. It's like benign, but you know, the especially like the squamous cell, like they, they tend to spread, um, but yeah, even if they're benign. Um, yeah, anyway, so yeah, melanomas, basically resections. Um, so I saw a few cases um, in the operating room. Some of them were like, there was like one who was like quite deep, was in the back and they had to like carve out quite a lot and to close like it was a bit hard to do. Um, one of them, yeah, the hole was so big, like they couldn't 
close anymore so they had to do a was it a flap or a graft no it was a graft so they did a skin graft and what they did they took a part of the back of the thigh with this little like like razor vacuum thingy blade thing that sucks the skin and cuts a little a layer of the epidermis like at the top and you sort of get like a a piece of skin <laughs> it's like it's odd i don't know how to explain it but yeah basically this big machine that they slide onto the back of your thigh so you can get like a big piece of skin um yeah and then they put it on this little plate they do like all these little holes because then they're going to put it on top of your surgery site right and then you need the little holes so you can like so that the edema from the surgery site can leave right all the all the fluid Otherwise, like, yeah, it's just not gonna stick and it's not gonna repair as well. Um, so yeah, I saw a skin graft or two. Yeah, it was kind of cool, honestly. Um, I didn't do that much. I just observed, I wasn't scrubbed in. I wasn't doing anything. It was like one resident, uh, two residents actually, and the attending, so I wasn't doing anything. Um, yeah, I was just observing. So that was that for the morning. And then after lunch, that's when the sort of like bigger surgeries started. So one of the bigger cases that I saw on my very first day was a patient who had um, uh, like a, a big hole. I'm not gonna say like too much details, but they had like a big hole on, um, on, their, on their like jaw and cheek. So yeah, they had just like a big hole that needed to be like repaired, right? And they did a pec major flap. So that was kind of cool. So I did speak to you about the pec major flap in my ENT video. Um, if you want to check it out the, here in the corner and the description down below where I explain what the pec major flap is. But in short, um, they just removed the pec major because you know, you had a big hole. Then they create this sort of tunnel down uh, on top of your clavicle. So then they just turn it around, slide it in the tunnel and then stitch it back up like in where, where the hole is basically. Um, so yeah, I saw that it was kind of a long procedure. I did scrub in on that surgery and I got to hold like retractors. Woohoo! That's a typical med student job in surgery, hold retractors, but it was cool. Like I was right there, like I was seeing everything, right? Um, I handed off like, you know, a few instruments. And I held the suction. Listen, it's almost as if I did the surgery, okay? I held the suction and retractors, okay? That's like, you know, cool enough. So that was like a, the, the big procedure that I saw. It lasted for a few hours uh, and then I left. Yeah, that, that was pretty much my very first day in plastic surgery. And basically for the rest of the week, I'm gonna have a few tutorials. I'm gonna be going in clinics. I'm gonna be coming back to the operating room. And from what I'm seeing, like my very first impressions, um, first of all, you get a lot of hand lacerations, like loads of them. Uh, lots of like dermatology stuff, honestly, like the, from what I'm seeing, the lines are really blurred between like plastic surgery and ENT and maybe maxillofacial surgeons, right? If you're looking at, you know, like, like face surgeries, neck surgeries, uh, the line is blurred there. If you're looking at the skin stuff, so plastics and dermatology, dermatologists can do minor excisions, they can do minor surgeries, they can resect these, you know, BCC, SCCs. Um, so the line is blurred there. Um, the line is blurred between, if you look at the trauma type of stuff, between plastics, ortho, and neuro even, and trauma, there's no trauma surgery here in Ireland, I think. Um, I don't think there is, but how it works at this hospital is that the upper limb trauma would be plastics and lower limb trauma would be ortho. And then there's also like blurred lines between, I guess, plastics and vascular surgery in that sense, like in the limbs, um, blurred lines between plastics and neuro for like reconnecting nerves and stuff. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it, it's quite interesting to see how many different specialties can actually do the same procedures, same surgical specialties. So like you get ENT, dermatology, well, it's not dermatology, it's not a surgical specialty, but like ENT, plastics, ortho, trauma surgery, vascular surgery, neurosurgery, and dermatology sort of like working on sometimes similar cases. I think that, that that's quite interesting. 
because I didn't know that so many people could do potentially like the same thing. Um, I guess it depends on like your local hospital policies and things like that. But yeah, that, that, that was my first day. Uh, it was quite exciting. Um, look forward to seeing more cut fingers because apparently that's the bread and butter, seeing cut fingers. <laughs> I look forward to the next weeks. I hope I'm gonna see like some more cool stuff, uh, cool procedures. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, just send me a DM or comment them in the comments down below. If you haven't seen my previous videos, I'm gonna link them right here and see you in the next video.